36 people lost their lives in the fires in Lahaina, Maui yesterday. We've been hearing from our many family members. We live there during the summers. We have many family members who are still on the island, and they're telling us what a horrifying scene it was. Gas stations exploding in the night, all the communications infrastructure wiped out, people fleeing for their lives into the Pacific Ocean, hundreds of houses, hundreds of people with all their possessions entirely destroyed. It is an absolute terrible tragedy, and it's hard for us to keep it together. Because Lahaina is not just important for you know, what it is today, it's an important symbol. It's the place where uh, the capital of the Hawaiian Kingdom was. And so it's the place where the Royal Mausoleum was, where Waiola Church was, where Holy Innocence Episcopal Church was. The local Hongwanji mission in, um, in uh, Mala Boat Ramp was completely destroyed also, along with the, the first printing press, museums, the library, so many things that were lost that were of vast cultural importance and including things that were of importance of us for personal reasons, family reasons, the places where our children learned how to surf and to swim, um, where we spent many, many summer afternoons just enjoying each other's company. It's where my bachelor party was. It's where we um, spent so many hours together as a family. And so as we look at this, as we experience this terrible tragedy, it, it's a reminder of several things. First of all, um, the corporations that ran the plantations um, did not do a good job of caring. They left town and, and abandoned everything, and the, the fields that they abandoned, um, fire-producing, um, non-native species grew there, so there, there's a human responsibility for it. And there's also climate change, too. Um, our actions around the world led to the, the hurricane that built the, 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 the winds, the, the drought that was made the, the flames and the, the fire possible. So there is this sense of responsibility. There's no such thing as an act of God anymore. But as um, we think about this, as we, as we review it, um, Christians are very fortunate in the sense that at the very heart of our belief, we believe that God is in the middle of our suffering, that God chooses to be part of our inner life, that God um, does not turn his back on, on, on our suffering and that God is with us. The theologian Catherine Sondrager is the theologian I was reading in Lahaina, Maui a month ago. And this is one of the things she says in her systematic theology book. She says, we must pause for a moment to consider the remarkable grace that in the midst of death, we are in life. Our poor powers of imagination and of consolation can only distinguish between a presence that is comforting but powerless and a deed that may be terrifying but altogether ineffective. So we have a hard time imagining a God being present with us, God being powerful, God being active, but God is with us even when we're suffering the most. I don't know where you are as you hear me and hear these words. I don't know what you're wrestling with or suffering with, but I do know that God is near to you, um, and I do know that God can help to see you through. My name is Malcolm Clemens Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, California. Thanks for watching. More good news.